Approximately 35 million people this year will select Medicare Advantage plans. At their disposal will be 200 different companies that are offering 8,767 different plans. They say the average county will have 200 plans available. That means the average beneficiary will have 43 plan options at their disposal. Lots of options leads to lots of confusion. And so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to share with you four steps to choosing a Medicare, Medicare Advantage plan for 2024 so you'll have the confidence that you choose the right plan. All right, so let's get started by talking about step number one in picking the right advantage plan for you. First off, uh, you're going to notice there's a tremendous amount of options. You have lots and lots of carriers. Uh, there's actually almost 200 carriers throughout the country who offer advantage plans. I just want to just mention some of the bigger ones. Number one, Cigna uh, uh, has a lot of advantage plans, and right now they're in about 28 states around the country. Uh, Centene, um, you may not recognize that name, but you will certainly recognize WellCare. Uh, WellCare is actually owned by Centene. They also do a lot of Medicaid business as well. Now in healthcare, of course, the largest um, uh, Medicare Advantage uh, provider, and they're actually right now uh, an option in 49 states. Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, has plans in 47 states. Anthem has plans in 14 states. Aetna has uh, uh, plans in all 50 states as well as Humana. All right. In fact, it's interesting. Uh, between United Healthcare and Humana, uh, they control about 50% of the market. Uh, Kaiser, of course, and Selected Market, CVS, and then miscellaneous cares. And what I mean by that is these are cares that are just in, uh, possibly just in multiple counties or maybe in a region, and that would be it. But lots of options. And so as you uh, begin to look at all these different companies, what you're going to pay attention to is um, the star ratings of these companies and their plans, because those star ratings give you an indication as to how satisfied those people who have enrolled in their plans actually are. All right, then that's going to take us to step number two. And this step is all about choosing your coverage network. And what I mean by that is that uh, when you enroll to an Advantage plan, you have to decide upon the network and how that network is going to provide coverage for you. And so we basically have two types of networks, and then we have a hybrids as well. So let's talk, first of all, about an HMO. HMO plans, uh, that stands for Health Maintenance Organization. Um, and uh, the majority of the Advantage plans actually are HMOs today. And so uh, as with everything, there's going to be some pros and there's going to be some cons. So really the pros with selecting an Advantage plan that is an HMO is this. You are going to notice that you have lower co-pays, lower co-pays for sure uh, on the HMO plans. You're also going to have lower max out of pockets. And again, you're going to notice this. And so that's one of the kind of the distinguishing characteristics of an HMO, lower uh, co-pays, uh, lower max out of pocket for the year. Uh, and then also uh, you're going to have uh, more perks. Now, the reason that you're going to see this uh, package being a little bit more attractive financially is because uh, that insurance company uh, has a contract with these providers, and then uh, those providers actually are willing to accept more because uh, they're looking really for more patients. So there's a lot more um, uh, a quantity of uh, activity medically with those uh, providers that uh, give services through that HMO contract. They don't make as much, but they see a lot more activity, and they pass that savings then on to you by lower uh, uh, co-pays, lower maxes, and then more perks. Now, uh, with every plan, there's also going to be some cons. So what that means uh, here, if I, I am on an HMO, number one, uh, what I have to do is you have to stay in network. The only way that you can go out of network on an HMO plan is if you're in an urgent care situation or emergency room, actually anywhere in the world, uh, you're not uh, going to be out of network in those situations. But everything else beyond e uh, emergency room and urgent care, you have to stay uh, within your network. Okay. Another uh, uh, con here is going to be this, is that you uh, may need to have referral. Now, not all plans do this uh, in all circumstances, but sometimes you are going to need uh, to have a referral uh, if you're going to be uh, on that HMO plan. And then the last thing would be this. You are going to have fewer providers, okay, for sure. Uh, not as many uh, providers, hospitals, doctors, specialists are willing to uh, take the lower reimbursement rate that they get uh, from the HMO contract. So you'll notice that those networks are going to be a little bit smaller. Now, it doesn't mean that there's not enough providers, but it's definitely going to be less than what the PPO is. 
All right, so those are the um, kind of the issues revolving around an HMO. And then the second option is, is PPO. And again, uh, almost every uh, service area is going to have multiple PPOs, not as many HMOs as a HMOs available. But the PPOs uh, also has some pros and some cons. And it's kind of the opposite here. Uh, one of the pros about being in a PPO is you can go out of network. You can. Uh, now, you have to go to a network provider uh, that uh, does take Medicare, uh, but you can go to them. Now, the issue would be if I go out of network, it's going to cost me more. Uh, so if I stay in my network, my copay on a primary care doctor may be zero. If I go out of network to see a primary care doc, it could be uh, maybe 40% coinsurance. So you have the privilege to go out, but again, it's going to cost you more money. Also, uh, the pros to uh, being on um, uh, a PPO plan is uh, no referrals at all. Uh, in other words, if you want to go see a cardiologist or you want to see uh, your endocrinologist or dermatologist, you don't, do not have to go uh, through your primary care physician as you do sometimes on HMO. So there's never going to be a referral uh, with those. Okay, And then also, uh, we're going to have a larger network. There's larger um, uh, networks, meaning we have more providers that are going to be willing to take the PPO. So that's also a nice factor as well. Now, it could be that you like the HMO plan, the, the benefits of the plan. So as long as your providers are in there, you may be fine with the HMO. But with the PPO, uh, we don't we don't have to identify a primary care physician. Now, they don't require that as they would on an HMO. Now, there's also some cons with PPOs. And that is this. Notice over here what we're going to have. We're going to have some higher copays, right? Um, and that means that uh, it's going to cost you more to see a specialist, typically, on a PPO plan. Um, you may have a higher out-of-pocket if you're going to go to the hospital or whatever, but the point is uh, they typically have that. It's not quite as attractive financially. Also, one of the cons is you're going to have a higher max out-of-pocket, right? Why is that? Well, because you get to go out of network. And so because you have that privilege, then you're going to have to pay more if you were to have cancer or some kind of issue to do that as well. Also, one of the cons is uh, the perks are less. Now, you're going to have perks for sure, but they will not be as attractive as they were over on that HMO plan. All right, so the point is when you decide uh, what kind of coverage you're looking for, it's going to have a network attached to it. Now, let's talk real quickly just about the hybrids. There's two types of hybrids. One is called an HMO POS. Now, it is an HMO plan, okay, which means it still comes with the pros and cons of an HMO, but what they do on POS, those letters mean point of service. So what they do is they let you go out of the network. So in that area, it's kind of like a PPO. Now, it's not unlimited, go wherever you want to go, uh, but they will allow you with certain services to be able to go out of your network. Now, and when you go out just like you would on a PPO, it's going to cost you more money. So when you see the letters HMO PO, uh, point of service, they're just simply giving you that out of network option. And then the other kind of plans are called uh, SNPs, and these stands for special needs plans. And this too is kind of a hybrid because we have some special needs plans that are PPOs and some that are HMOs. And what these are, there's a couple of them. One of these uh, are called duals. And this is someone that's dual eligible. They're, uh, they're eligible for Medicare, but also Medicaid. And this, so they put together some special advantage plans for those who have that dual eligibility called a special need plan dual. We also have some that are for chronic health conditions. And these are people that have certain uh, health issues. I'm going to read off a quick list to you just so you know. There's actually 15 of them. And let me read these to you because uh, these are um, uh, uh, in some markets and sometimes they're very advantageous. So uh, some of the chronic conditions would be autoimmune disorders, cancer, cardiovascular uh, disorders, um, uh, chronic heart failure, dementia, diabetes, end-stage liver disease, end-stage renal disease, uh, people that um, have HIV or AIDS, uh, they could qualify for uh, special needs plans, chronic lung disorders, uh, chronic or disabling mental conditions, neurological disorders, strokes, those kind of things. And then there's also some where they actually combine some of these chronic uh, conditions. Uh, there's a couple of these. Actually, there's five of them. And these are folks that have issues, um, uh, chronic, let me read them to you real quickly. Uh, this should be someone that has diabetes and heart failure. Someone that has heart failure and another uh, cardiovascular disorder. Someone has diabetes and cardiovascular disorder. Others that have diabetes, chronic heart failure, and cardiovascular disorders. Stroke and cardi uh, cardiovascular disorders. The point is, uh, they have multiple um, issues going on. They also could qualify for a chronic special needs plan. 
plant. And the whole idea is it's still an Advantage plant, so we still have these issues, but now what's going to happen is there's going to be some coordinated care uh, between uh, your providers and the insurance company uh, trying to take care of some of these special chronic issues that you have. And so just want to be aware that those are what we would call hybrid plans. So what are we going to do? We're going to have to choose our network because that's going to determine the kind of coverage that we're going to have. Hey, if you found this video helpful and if you want to see more Medicare information just like it, then go below, right below the video, and you can give us a thumbs up as well as subscribe to our channel. And every time I put a new video, which is about two every week. You'll be notified of that video, and others just like you who need this vital information will get it as well. So we've uh, looked at the carriers, uh, multiple options there, of course, and we also know now we're going to have to choose a network for our coverage. But then step number three is this. Now it's time to choose what our out-of-pocket costs are going to be. So as we look at the plans, uh, they're going to show us uh, how much it will cost us to actually be on, on that plan. Now keep in mind, uh, there's uh, uh, what we would call a broad category of out-of-pocket expenses and I'm going to share those with you and then we'll look at the details okay so and as I was saying keep in mind whenever you're on an Advantage plan you have to be enrolled in A and B so we're gonna to have to pay our, our Medicare Part B premium and so uh, in 2024 the Part B premium is going to be hundred and seventy four dollars and seventy cents a month and again that is for our Medicare Part B a for most people is at zero premium but in addition to that there could be a premium for your Advantage plan now 70% of them actually are at a zero pr uh, premium and the rest of them are going to be very very low but there could be a premium number two uh, deductible now uh, the majority of advantage plans do not have a deductible some do but as we talk about deductibles you got to remember this we have a medical deductible and we also could have a prescription plan deductible and again so when you look at these plans and make the comparisons be sure you're aware of the deductibles and again the majority of them are going to be zero on both sides but some of them are not all right number three uh, then we're going to get into co-pays these are out-of-pocket expenses for the services that we're going to need i'm going to give you a, a detailed list here in just a minute but again that would be something that we're going to be uh, paying for and then every plan is going to have an annual max out of pocket so that's a calendar year and so this is going to vary uh, uh, throughout the country for sure but on the average most HMOs are going to be about anywhere from about three to four thousand for the year uh, PPOs are going to be somewhere between about four thousand to seven thousand for the year and all that simply means is that you pay copays until you hit that max and once you've hit the max if you ever do but once you hit it then there's no additional out-of-pocket expense for the remainder of the year and then that max out-of-pocket will reset every January and then we start paying copays again again until we hit the max and then lastly uh, prescriptions now there's two ways in which we get advantage plans we can get what is called an ma only plan and we can get a plan that is called mapd uh, Medicare Advantage with prescription drug plans. Now, the only people, in my opinion, that ought to get an MA only plan are those that get their medications through the VA uh, or through TRICARE, which means your retired military or your retired civil service, and you have FEHB, Federal Employee Health Benefit option, where you have other places to get your meds, and that's considered credible coverage, and you actually can get an MA only plan, and those really are, frankly, quite attractive. But unless you're VA, TRICARE, or uh, a veteran, you're not going to do that. Then you're going to get a Medicare Advantage plan for the inpatient, outpatient, and an embedded or what they call integrated prescription drug plan. I'll give you the details in just a minute. So my whole point is these are the main large kind of uh, areas where we're going to have out-of-pocket expenses. And so what I'm going to do is just take just a couple minutes here and give you some details about that because as you compare your plans, this is really what you're going to be focusing on. Now this list of um, services is certainly not exhaustive, but these are really the most common things that people encounter when they're going to be on an Advantage plan. So first off, let's just talk about hospital inpatient. This is someone that's been admitted to the hospital maybe for a surgery or have a heart issue or some other kind of illness. And so what's going to happen is we're going to have a daily copay. Uh, daily copays right now, folks, are going to range anywhere from about $250 to about $350 a day. Okay, and every service you receive in that hospital that day is covered by the daily copay. And most of these are going to go from anywhere from one to five days, maybe one to six or seven days. But once I've hit that limit, depending upon the plan, then there's no additional money um, that you have to pay uh, on, a, on a daily copay basis uh, once you've reached that max. So if you're in you know, 12 days and you're on a plan that stops at five, then day six to 12 are no cost to you. And so when you're comparing plans, that's what you're looking at. What's my hospital? 
hospital copay and uh, what's the limit to that. And every time I'm hospitalized, I have to pay that copay until I hit my max for the year. Uh, we just put in your inpatient mental. Uh, the way this works is when people are having some type of a mental issue where they need to be admitted, um, uh, Medicare covers up to, as well as Advantage plans, cover up to 190 days of lifetime uh, in, and, um, uh, for um, uh, when you're institutionalized in a hospital for mental care. And so what happens if you're on the Advantage plan, again, you'd have that same copay, again, for that certain limit. And again, up to 190 days, they'll cover you. All right. Now, skilled nursing facility. This is nothing more than inpatient rehab. Uh, this is someone that's had a stroke, maybe a hip replacement, or maybe some kind of injury or accident illness, and they're, uh, they've been to the hospital, and now they go to skilled nursing facility. So usually what happens? is days 1 to 20, there is zero copay. There is a couple plans this year that have small copay, so you want to pay attention to that. First 20 days, very small. But then after that, normally that copay goes up, and this is going to be 21 to 100, and right now on average, that's going to be about, about $200 a day copay for any stay that's beyond uh, the 20 days. Okay, so yes, they're going to cover skilled nursing, and you'll have a little bit out of pocket. Now, outpatient surgery, uh, this is done in uh, really a couple settings. Sometimes the hospitals actually have outpatient outpatient uh, um, uh, surgery facilities, and then others, we have just freestanding outpatient um, uh, 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 facilities. Those are called ambulatory surgical centers. And so what happens typically on outpatient for a hospital is a little bit higher, normally about $350 uh, in, uh, if you're going to ambulatory surgical center, uh, it's going to be uh, usually a little bit less. But this would be for gallbladder removal, uh, knee replacements, um, cataract surgery, things like that. We're going to have a very reasonable copay for those. Now, now, urgent care, an emergency room, this is the one place we never worry about a network, whether on an HMO or a PPO. Uh, urgent care this year is ranging anywhere from about $20 to $50 copay if you go to like a minute clinic or one of those urgent care facilities. Emergency rooms this year are going to be in the neighborhood of about $90 to $135 for that emergency room copay. And then if you get admitted to the hospital, they'll actually waive that copay. Ambulance ride, <clears throat> this would be a ground ambulance as well as air ambulance. Uh, right now, we're seeing those copays come in about $250 to $300 uh, for a one-way trip. Uh, PCP stands for primary care physician. The majority of the plans this year, uh, you're going to be able to go to your primary care doctor at zero. Uh, there are some that I looked at were as much as maybe $10, but again, most of them are going to be zero. Specialists, again, it's going to be your rheumatologist or your endocrinologist, dermatologist, uh, your orthopedic doc, something like that. Uh, we're looking at copays this year in the neighborhood of about $20 to $50 copay. So again, very, very reasonable. All right, let's go to the next list. So here we have x-rays and scans. Now, x-rays, uh, some Sometimes actually uh, are zero, uh, but the normal is about $50 for an x-ray on your max copay. Now scans, now we're uh, talking uh, CAT scans and MRIs, uh, PET scans, those kind of things. Uh, those this year are going to be in the neighborhood of about $200 to $400. So every time you need one of those scans, uh, that will be your out-of-pocket expense. Radiation uh, is right now anywhere from about $20 to $30 copay. Uh, chemotherapy is usually coinsurance. So if you're getting traditional chemotherapy, therapy, you're going to pay about 20% of the Medicare approved amount. Okay, so flat copay and then that coinsurance. Now, Part B drugs, these are the professionally administered drugs. Uh, these are drugs that you're taking in outpatient, outpatient setting or possibly a doctor's office, uh, but you don't self-administer. Self-administered drugs are covered through Part D plans, but these are Part B covered meds, and there's a lot of them. And so uh, typically on an Advantage plan, your out-of-pocket expense is going to be 20% coinsurance on those meds. Home health care usually is zero, usually for home health care. Uh, physical therapy uh, right now is normally going to be about anywhere from $20 to $40, all right? So if you've had a knee replacement and they're going to take care of you at home, probably no cost to you uh, for that in-home therapy. But if you go to an out, uh, you know, freestanding clinic for physical therapy, uh, you've got a very small reasonable copay for that each time you go in. Now, diabetic supplies, durable medical equipment. Um, uh, now, uh, I noticed some of the plans this year on diabetic supplies, if you went to a network provider, some of those supplies were actually zero. Uh, but if you didn't stay in the network, then it was 20%, again, coinsurance. Almost all of them this year have a durable medical equipment at 20%. And these are things like scooters and wheelchairs and walkers, uh, diabetic uh, supplies, of course, uh, zero. But this would also be um, 
um, uh, if someone has uh, oxygen, their own oxygen equipment or a nebulizer, those kinds of things. They need a bed in the home, durable, meaning uh, this is equipment that can be reused uh, by multiple patients. Uh, uh, this is something that uh, we need if we're getting uh, a care in our home. And these are the things that's going to assist in our recovery. And so the whole point is that your out-of-pocket expense will be 20% of that Medicare approved amount. And then telehealth, uh, since COVID, this has become very popular. Uh, telehealth means means uh, you can uh, see a primary care doctor by video conference, specialist that way. And a lot of them are, are just very similar to inpatient, uh, somewhere between about zero to $20 copay. And now they're even doing some mental health uh, visits that way as well. So again, that's a, something that you need to be aware of your telehealth options. Now remember, all of these copays and all this out-of-pocket coinsurance, all this is going towards the annual max out-of-pocket, wherever that's going to be, HMO a little lower, PPO a little higher. Uh, and then once we hit the max out-of-pocket, then we're uh, uh, we have no further expenses uh, until the following January when then we'll start paying copays again. Now, the majority of you are going to have an embedded, integrated uh, uh, prescription drug plan part of your Medicare Advantage plan. So I want to make sure you're clear as to what you're looking for as you compare those plans. So number one, um, who are the, the preferred providers within that plan? Because every plan is going to have a network and there will be a couple pharmacies identified as preferred and all the rest are going to be standard. And all that simply means is that your preferred pharmacy is going to give you better pricing on the medications typically than a standard. All right, number two, every uh, plan uh, you're, is going to spell out for you what your out-of-pocket cost would be. We call that cost sharing. Uh, that's either a flat copay or it's coinsurance. And that's all based upon the tier of the medication. So when you're looking at plans, you want to be sure uh, to know exactly what tier uh, will be assigned to your medications. Uh, we have tier one. One, uh, two, three, four, and five. The higher the tier, the higher out-of-pocket expense you're going to have. So pay attention to that because one plan could rate as a tier two and the other one has it a tier three. And that could drastically affect your out-of-pocket expense. So we have cost sharing. Now there are a lot of meds that are going to be zero cost sharing because it's a, a, a very low cost uh, preferred generic medication. But this is how we're going to be able to identify what our out-of-pocket costs will be. Number, number three, our out-of-pocket cost on drug plans do change. Why? Because Medicare plans have phases. Phases. Some call them stages. And what this simply means is that uh, there's four phases. Uh, stage one is the deductible uh, phase. Uh, in 2024, that deductible is $545. Now, most Advantage plans are not going to charge you the deductible. So you go immediately to stage two, which is called the initial coverage stage. And that just simply means you're going to pay a copay for your medications, sometimes co-insurance for your medications. But while you're in that stage, Medicare is tracking the retail cost. Not your cost, the retail cost. And if I ever reach uh, 5,030 in retail, that pushes me into phase three, which is called the donor hole. Now, most people don't get the donor hole, but when I get there, I pay a flat 25% um, uh, coinsurance for any medication while in the donor hole. So be paying attention as you uh, look at these plans and compare these plans that you'll know what your out-of-pocket expense will be if you go to the donor hole. And then they track another number. This year, it's going to be $8,000. They call that true out-of-pocket. And if I ever reach $8,000, and again, it's not out of your pocket, uh, you probably spent a couple grand there. But uh, if I ever reach that, then I go to phase four, which is called catastrophic. And the good news is in 2024, if you ever get to catastrophic, you're zero out of pocket from then on out for the rest of the year. All right. And then those reset uh, then every January. Okay, so those are the phases and you want to pay attention to that so you'll know exactly what you're going to spend for your medications. And then number four, formulary. This is really the most important part of every drug plan. Formulary. This is a list of medications covered by the plan. You want to be sure your meds are covered by that plan. Now occasionally there could be a medication covered but it says QL which means quantity limit which means you may not get a 90 day fill. Medicare says no that one can only be filled for 30 days. Anything addictive or expensive is typically quantity limits. Step therapy means uh, this is a medication that you have to take before the, the plan will fill the brand name. Brand names are typically expensive. So step therapy says there's generic equivalent, generic alternative meds that you may need to take and then you can move up and eventually they may fill the brand name medication. And then we have what's called prior authorization. This is a very expensive medication and before they'll fill it, your doctor has to say this is why we need this medication. So docs involved in that. Now sometimes the medication is not in the formula 
formulary. So what you can do is you or your provider, your doctor, can ask for a formulary exception. You can ask them to add that medication to your formulary for the year. And so uh, this is a process that um, uh, usually when people ask for an exception, they're successful. But not guaranteed, but this is something you got to do to get certain medications filled. All right. And then lastly, I want to make sure you know that if, the, if you're on insulin, if insulin is covered by the plan, the max out of, max out of pocket <clears throat> this year is $35. Uh, they cannot charge you any more than $35 a month for the medication or $105 for a three-month supply. Okay, and if it's covered, that's the max they can charge. Now, if it's not covered, then that, that, that rule certainly doesn't apply. Uh, but most insulins, they are going to be covered at a $35 uh, copay. All right, so those are the details on our drug plans. All right, let's look at the last item that you need to consider. Hey, if you've come to the place where you know you're going to have to make some Medicare decision pretty soon and you want to make the right one, one of the best ways to do this is to go down below and you'll see in the comment section there the very first pinned comment at the top. You can actually click on a link there and you will book a call. And you'll book a call with one of our Medicare guides. All the guides with our company, I have personally trained them. Uh, they're professional, they answer all your questions, and they'll show you your Medicare options so that you'll be confident in your decisions. Let's get back to the video. And so these are really the miscellaneous items that you need to be aware of because they do matter. And I just simply call these the perks that come with Advantage plans. Number one, uh, they will give you some type of a dental uh, allowance. Uh, on PPOs, this is about $1,000. Uh, sometimes HMOs uh, may be $1,500 or so. Uh, sometimes they're even higher than that. I've seen them higher. Uh, but what you have to pay attention to, that dental allowance, is what will they cover? Uh, typically, it'll, that $1,000 goes for cleanings, goes for um, any other kind of comprehensive service that you would need, but that's it. Uh, now, if you have a plan that's 1500 obviously you can get a, a few more services, and then some are even going to be above that. The main thing you really have to pay attention to with these plans is, do you have to see a network provider? And sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes not. Now, sometimes your doctor will not take the plan, so you may have to pay uh, for your services, then you get reimbursed by the Advantage plan by filling out uh, a, a form, and uh, they'll reimburse you for that. Okay, so that's a dental allowance. Secondly, we have vision. Uh, now, original Medicare here covers um, uh, a vision very well, uh, but what they don't cover is preventive eye exams and um, uh, uh, eyewear. And so that's where the Advantage plan will actually come in with a couple extra benefits, and they'll give you one routine eye exam a year, right? It's just routine. It's nothing uh, real expanded, but it's covered. And then they'll give you a credit. And I've seen some as low as $100 and some as high as $250 credit towards eyewear. Could be contact lens, uh, gl glasses, things like that. All right, so you can look at those. And then hearing. Now, hearing aids really vary plan to plan. Some hearing aids uh, are going to be covered by a copay. Um, I've looked at some that had copays as low as $199, some as high as $1,299. Some would just simply give you a credit. I looked at a plan that was $1,500 uh, uh, an ear per year. So you'd get actually $3,000 credit towards uh, um, uh, your hearing aids. <laughs> okay, so the whole point is, uh, depending on the plan, they'll either structure it by a copay system, uh, staying in a network of providers, or they'll just let you go where you want, and they'll do a direct reimbursement. All right, and then gym memberships. Uh, we have two uh, networks. Uh, one of these is called Silver Sneakers. Uh, this is the larger network. Silver Sneakers is um, uh, what most plans uh, make available. Uh, if your gym takes it, then you can go there at no cost to Typically. And then there's another one. This is actually uh, United Healthcare, and they have a, a network called Renew Active, and they're uh, pretty similar. Uh, but I have seen plans that take Silver Sneakers that don't take Renew Active. So you want to be sure to check to make sure if this is an important thing for you uh, that you can go to the, your facility. Also, we have over-the-counter benefits, and this varies plan to plan. Most plans right now are going to be anywhere from about, excuse me, about fifty dollars to maybe a hundred dollars a quarter. And so they give you a catalog, or you can go online, and these are just typically things you'd buy at, you know, at a uh, over-the-counter at a drugstore, Walmart or CVS or Walgreens or someplace. Uh, and one thing I'll be paying attention to is sometimes uh, if you don't use those during that quarter, they do not roll over to the next. Some will roll over, some don't. But again, you want to be sure if yours doesn't roll over, you be sure to take advantage of that particular benefit. All right, so that's those. Let me show you just a couple more. This next uh, benefit with some Advantage plans would be, would be transportation. Now, the majority of the plans do not uh, give transportation benefit, but some do. And if this is something that's important, 
important to you that you want to look for a plan that, that has this. And this just simply means transportation uh, typically to a docs or a specialist office and then backs. And so what they'll do is they may give you, um, you know, uh, you know, 24 um, uh, one-way trips uh, for the year. I looked at one plan that actually had unlimited. I looked at several that had none, but these are trips uh, to uh, a doc uh, in case uh, you uh, need transportation. They actually will cover those. And I think you do have to make arrangements about 72 hours in advance for that transportation, but again, that's a nice benefit for those who actually do need that. And then meals. Uh, this would be meals after a skilled nursing stay or after a hospital stay. Uh, some actually provide meals for a week, some two weeks, some actually four weeks, uh, but after those stays, then they're going to uh, bring meals in. Uh, and these are meals, of course, that would, could be frozen. They're going to be fresh every day, but they'll bring them in. And um, that's a nice little benefit for you as well. And then payment cards. Now, I put in here payment cards as a broad category because all the carriers have them, or most of them have them, but they call them different things. And so all this simply means is they load a card, typically a Visa card. And uh, some of these load on about $200 a quarter, some, sometimes even more than that. But that money can be used for a variety of things, depending upon um, uh, if you're on Medicaid, or not, but uh, that money can be used for uh, copays if you have those uh, on your plan to see a specialist uh, or if you were uh, going to uh, you see a dentist and uh, you went above your limit uh, of the dental allowance, then you could use that payment card to pay the dentist. Some of them actually will let you pay utilities with those. Now, again, not all of them, but the whole point is uh, see what kind of payment cards they offer. I saw one the other day uh, that had a payment card uh, that was $1,200 for the whole year, and that specifically was for um, um, uh, exercise equipment or, uh, you know, golfing fees or anything that was going to uh, go through a, like a wellness benefit. They had a, a card available where you could spend that. It could be by treadmill or, uh, you know, do whatever uh, that would relate to exercise and you could use your card for that. All right. And then number four, uh, post-discharge care. Uh, now, this is for care after a hospital stay or a skilled nursing stay. Now, the reason they do this is because they want you out of the hospital ASAP. They want you out of the skilled nursing facility ASAP. So what they actually will do is they'll provide some home health care, not necessarily a nurse. It could be uh, but a provider. And uh, some of the plans will cover up to four hours a day. And they'll set a limit. I saw one that lets you use 12 days a year. But again, what they're trying to do is really reduce the expense out of their pocket, let you go home, and then still get some additional care that's necessary uh, for uh, a certain period of time. All right. And then lastly, uh, I want to talk about Part B Give Back as I close this. Uh, now, uh, these are not in the majority of plans, but they're still out there. And so what this means, uh, this year in 2024, our Part B premium is $174.90. If you're on a plan that gives you uh, Part B Give Back, uh, they may give you back $100 a month. Um, which would increase your Social Security check. Or if you're being billed for that, that bill would only be $74.90 instead of $174.90. But that Part B give back. But be careful on Part B give backs. Though they are a reality, what happens is normally when they're willing to give this money back to you, they're taken away from somewhere on the plan. Typically, Part B give backs have higher max out of pockets, have higher co-pays, and those kinds of things. So again, uh, what they're doing is robbing for Peter to pay Paul. And so if this is something, though, that's beneficial to you, uh, just be aware that that package, uh, other things within that uh, uh, Medicare Advantage package is probably going to be quite as attractive of those that don't offer the Part B give back. All right, so these are things that you need to be aware of and to consider. So go through these steps, and we would be delighted to help you with this. Take the time to make sure you're absolutely on the very best plan for your situation, because there is no best out there uh, for everyone, but you can find the best for you.